Hello everyone and welcome to the DIY Haven. In this video, I am going to be walking you through the steps of how we went about building our own DIY barn door. So I found this rail on Amazon. I can link it in the description. And we started out by hanging it and then we used um, the measurements from the rail to the floor of how long we wanted to make our door, which we came up with 83 and a half inches. So then hubby got to measuring our tongue and groove boards. For our door width, we ended up needing six tongue and groove boards, which brought our door width to be a little over 31 inches, I believe. Since it was my first time using the saw, he set it up for me and then I got to cut in. A little trick that I learned from my husband, so when you're cutting out boards that are all the same length, you can take your scrap piece that you cut off from the other one and use it as a measurement to see how much you need to cut off from the other boards. As you can see, this one was off from the measurements. I should mention that we started this project at like 10 o'clock at night. I highly do not recommend. You might want to start this first thing in the morning when you're awake and aware of what you're doing. So, and also it's a good idea to double check your measurements. Because as you can see, I checked that one and I knew something was off. So I called him like, hey, can you check this again? Because it's not looking right. After we cut out our pieces of tongue and groove board, it is now time to try to assemble it to make sure that everything looks okay before we start gluing and nailing things together. Hubby's using a little mallet to try to push the boards closer together because some of them were not going into the grooves properly. Um, the easiest way to do this is to put it upright instead of laying it on the floor. The grooves will slide in a lot easier. And here's where we realized that we might have messed up and some of our boards were actually shorter than the rest of them. And we contemplated just leaving it, but then it would look kind of weird. So we called it a night and decided to leave this project alone for a few weeks. Sometimes when you're doing DIY projects, you may need to take a break and then come back to it when you're in a better headspace. So that was the case with this door. So I went back to Home Depot and I got some more tongue and groove boards, cut them out to the correct length, and I decided I was finally ready to finish making this door. Um, I put it together, made sure everything fit, and then I used Gorilla Wood Glue to glue in between the grooves. That way the tongue and groove pieces would stick permanently. I used a damp rag to wipe off any excess glue that may have seeped out of the grooves. As you can see, some of my boards were not holding together properly, so in another DIY video that I saw, they used bungee cords to strap them together, and then I left it overnight until the glue dried. I came back the next day and once the glue was dried, I removed my bungee cords and then I started working on my trim pieces. I laid them out how I wanted them to look on the door and then I got to cutting them down to the length of the door so that I can also glue those down. After figuring out how I wanted to lay my trim pieces and putting it all together, it was now time for me to cut the pieces that were going to go diagonal across the door. Now this was a learning experience for me. I actually had to go to YouTube to learn how to cut the right angle for these doors. I can link the video in the description that I watched because he did a really great job of explaining how to cut these angles for your barn door. Doing DIY projects, it's a lot of trial and error. Um, here I am using uh, the Gorilla Wood Glue to try to glue my trim pieces down and I later learned that this probably wasn't the best option because the glue just wasn't holding the pieces down at all. Thank you. 
using more Gorilla Wood Glue and random objects from around the garage to try to hold the pieces down until they dry. Okay, so I made a little boo-boo, as you can see. When I cut this angle, I cut it a little too short, so I decided that I'm not going back to the store. So I cut a smaller piece, put it with some wood glue, and then use the tape to hold it together, and I'm just going to sand everything and hope for the best, because this is going in my house, so I really don't care if it's perfect, I think it looks good. But we all make mistakes, and it was my little mistake, and here is where we're at so far, so I'm working on gluing my decorative pieces down, and then I can get to sanding and sanding. Next, I'm going to test out my stain to make sure that it's really the color that I want to use because in the past, I've bought stain and then put it directly onto my project and then realized that it was not the color that I was expecting at all. I used a piece of scrap wood that I had and I tested out the color of my stain. I ended up using Minwax Premium Oil Semi-Transparent English Chestnut. Gorilla Wood Glue was not holding these pieces together, so I used liquid nails. I'm not sure if that was a smart idea, but it held the pieces together a lot better than the Gorilla Glue was, so it worked in my favor. So it's up to you if you want to try it or not. Here's my favorite part of the project because I know the end is near and all my hard work is finally paying off. So I'm using 120 grit sandpaper to lightly sand this uh, door. Um, you can use a sander if you have a sander. I have a sander, but I chose not to use it because the sandpaper didn't fit the diameter of my sander. So I just used my hand. So your hand is perfectly fine. If you want to use a sander, you can use a sander. And like I mentioned, I use 120 grit sandpaper. You're going to do this on both sides of your door since you're going to be staining both sides of the door. I mean, if you're not staining your door, then you probably don't need to sand it. If you're painting it, you can probably just go ahead and start painting. But since I am using stain, it is recommended that you sand before you stain. Next, I use a damp, clean rag to wipe off all the sand dust. And once it dried off a little, I started with my pre-stain conditioner. I use Minwax water-based pre-stain. And I saw this hack on Instagram where someone said that you can use a magic eraser to spread your stain. Um, after trying this out, I do not recommend. After a while, the sponge started to get like, the stain was basically eating the sponge and it was just getting onto the, it was like sticking to the door and it was just a mess. So I do not recommend. I tried it out so that you didn't have to. Don't do it. I would recommend using either a clean rag to spread your stain and conditioner or using a actual like sponge. They sell them at the dollar store. Um, I believe you can buy them. I got a set from Home Depot for about less than $8 and there was like quite a few brushes in there. That's your best alternative versus this. I let the conditioner sit for about five minutes and then I wiped off any excess and then I let it dry and penetrate into the wood for about 15 to 30 minutes. After that, I started to apply my stain. Um, I waited about, I want to say I waited about 15 minutes after my after applying the stain and then I wiped off any excess with a clean rag. And you can use more than one coat if you want to, but I decided that I liked the look of the door with just one coat. So I just did the one coat of stain and called it a day. I let the stain dry for about two to three hours. Sometimes I'll leave it overnight and then I flip the door over and realize that some of my side pieces were falling off. So this is where I used the brad nailer and then repeated the same steps on the front of the door. If you do not have a brad nailer, you can just use a nail and a regular hammer and just put a few of them into the trim pieces to try to hold them onto the door more securely versus just relying on the liquid nails and the wood glue. After my stain dried, I applied Minwax Premium Oil Fast Drying Polyurethane and this is to give the door that kind of the sheen look because I used the oil. You can use water base but the oil gives it that sheeny look. And this is also to protect the stain, protect the door. I have children and I have dogs that live here and if you have either of the two, you know that your stuff will get scratches and bumps and whatnot. So this is just to give it that extra protection. 
Now it's time to start applying my hardware and here I am looking confused trying to read the directions. Looking even more confused walking around with my tape measure trying to figure out what the hell I need to be doing. So after about a half an hour to an hour of just pure confusion, Hubby came to save the day and help me figure out the best way to get the hardware onto my door. So he decided that it was a great idea to use painter's tape, tape it to the door, and then use my tape measure to figure out the middle of the door and exactly where I need to be putting my holes. And it worked out perfectly because I was at this point, I was ready to give up and just not even put it on there and just have him do it when he got home from work. But the, also the stubbornness in me was like, nah, sis, you have to do this on your own. But with a little help, I was able to get it done. I was so nervous doing this because the door was practically done at this point and if I put the hole in the wrong spot like I was just thinking about the fact that I would have to start all over again but so I marked where my first hole was going to be and then I started to drill out my hole. At this point, I'm like, what is going on? Because this thing is not drilling the hole into the door. This was my first time doing this. I'm like, maybe it's broken. I've never used it before. Like it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Like when my husband does it, it's like one, two, three, and he's done. Comes to find out I had to drill in the wrong direction. I had it to in the reverse instead of drilling forward, it was drilling backwards. So in case you need anyone to start a fire, just call me up because the door started smoking because of the friction of me, you know, grinding the wood and using this tool the wrong way. After running to my husband to tell him like, yo, something is definitely wrong with this drill. Like, you have to take it back to the store. He's like, man, you have this drill in the wrong direction. So it was pretty much smooth sailing after that. I lightly screwed in the first screw and then used that to figure out how to place the second screw. And so I unscrewed it and then I drilled my second hole and then put the hardware back on and then securely tightened it. And then I did the same thing on the other side. But if you try to put your screw in and it's not immediately going through the hole, it's okay to use your drill and kind of just, you know, like go back and forth until the hole is big enough where the screw will go in much easier versus having to force it in there. So my husband tightened all the bolts with an Allen wrench. Now it's time to attach the handle. The easy and smart thing to do would probably have been to use the backside of the handle to just see where the hole should be but I wanted it kind of to be perfect because I didn't want any mistakes so yeah we measured it found the middle and attached everything I also got this handle off of Amazon I can link it for you in the description if you're interested
Now it's time to bring the door inside and I was crossing my fingers and toes and everything because I'm like at this point I hadn't even brought the door in to see if it would fit properly but thankfully everything worked out. We did have to end up using a piece of wood and attach it to the studs on the wall for right over the door because there weren't any studs that were directly where the holes lined up for our rail. So hubby was able to fix that and I do have to go back and paint that piece of wood white to match the trim but we're all set. Here's the final look of the door. It works perfectly. And here's the backside from our basement. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.